This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Cabo Jim Schaller. Welcome, Good Neighbors, episode number 74 of the Good Neighbor Podcast to Cerro. Today we have Good Neighbor Dr. James Crowley of the Cataract and, and Refractive Institute of Florida. Doctor, welcome. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to come on here and have a little discussion. Yeah, it could, could be good to get to know you a little bit more. So why don't we just jump right in and why don't you share a little bit about what you do over there? Well, um, I'm an ophthalmologist. I've been in the area for uh, 43, coming up to 44 years this summer. Uh, so I've seen a lot of changes over the years of technology and medicine and ophthalmology. So I have an ophthalmology practice in Southwest Florida in Cape Coral, Lehigh Acres, and Bonita Springs. Uh, you cover all of Southwest Florida. Very nice. Pretty much. So, so how did you get involved in the uh, this industry? Well, uh, long story. Try to make it short. Um, my uh, father had a good friend that they played tennis with uh, when I was growing up, and he was a general practitioner back in those days. Not as many specialists, and he really wasn't happy. So he went to Vanderbilt and became an ophthalmologist and stayed in Nashville. He'd come back and visit occasionally, and he'd tell me how fabulous it was to be an ophthalmologist. You, you save people's vision. You make them see again and and uh, talk about how great his life was. And I said, that's what I want to do. So, I mean, I get to restore vision. I get people who are you know have trouble with their vision, and with a cataract operation or whatever, I restore it back to they have 20-20 vision again. And it's really not get doesn't get much better than that. Right. That's very, very rewarding, you might say. So everybody's kind of endured some type of, I want to say challenge or maybe a little bit of hardship along their path or their journey. Is there something you can look back at now and say, you know what, you know, it happened, but I'm in a better place now because of it. Well, I mean, there's always obstacles. Medical school is not easy by any stretch of the mean or residencies are not easy. I mean, when I was a resident, I worked a hundred hours or more a week, not, not 40 hours a week, but more than a hundred hours a week. So it was a very long marathon grind of a pro of a learning experience, but uh, you know you get just have to get through it. Right. So is is there are there any myths or maybe misconceptions uh, regarding your industry that maybe we could clear up for our listeners that you know might shy them away or they may not know? Well, that's say one of the biggest things is is that cataract surgery has gotten so good that unfortunately some doctors are doing cataract surgery on people with no cataracts or minimal cataracts just because they can do it and make more money. So my warning to people is, is that there's no such thing as needing to have your cataract done. Cataract surgery is an elective operation. You're choosing to do it because you decide you need to see better, not because some doctor says you need to do it. Absolutely, it's treat, treating the patients the right way. Exactly, right. not not over treating them. So. Outside of work, we live in Southwest Florida. Are you from here originally? No, I'm originally from Kentucky, but I, I've been here 43 years. The first time I came to Southwest Florida was in 1958. Wow. I was, I was eight years old, and my great aunt and uncle lived in Naples, in a little old-style Florida home on 10th Avenue South. And my family would come to visit occasionally. And uh, I mean, it was fantastic. I just loved it because I could I could walk to the Naples Pier and catch fish all day long at that time. Right. There's nobody else around, which is great, right? And quite different there today. Fish everywhere. There was fish everywhere. And, and yeah, absolutely. Was- absolutely. So is there is there one thing maybe about you know eye treatment, preventative maintenance, whatever you want to call it, that maybe our our listeners should know? Um, well, I, I'd say that number number one is a healthy lifestyle. So, I mean, you should eat good, healthy food, have a healthy lifestyle, exercise some. If your body's healthy, your eyes are going to be healthy as well. Along with that, uh, you should protect your eyes from the sun. So you should always wear sunglasses outside or wear a hat or whatever. Cataract, uh, um, UV light has been shown to increase the rate at which cataracts develop. So you'll develop cataracts at a younger age if you're exposed to a lot of UV light through your life. There's some evidence that possibly it also contributes to to macular degeneration. So you should protect your eyes from the sun. Interesting. Yeah, no, I'd pay hey, preventative maintenance is what it's all about, you know, avoiding troubles before they happen. Is there, are there 
I'm going to say some, some signs that people maybe need help or, you know, a lot of people put it off until, you know, later thinking, I don't really have a problem, but. You know. I guess this is a sort of another warning. Um, diabetes is the second leading cause of permanent blindness in the United States today. Unfortunately, it doesn't cause symptoms till it's advanced to a, you know, a really significant stage. And so you need to have an eye exam every year dilated, look at your retina every year by an eye, eye specialist, because if you catch it early, you have a chance of saving your vision. So that would be one. The other thing is if you're starting to notice any distortion in your vision, then it could be that you're having a macular problem. And then as we get older, macular degeneration is the leading cause of blindness in the United States. Same thing. If you start to develop macular degeneration of the wet type, then the earlier you catch that, the better your chances are of maintaining your vision. Interesting. Is, uh, are there are there any, I want to say, trends or new technologies out there that are changing what you're doing? Constantly. I mean, there's new medicines, new, new injections for macular degeneration, new glaucoma treatments, different procedures, operations. It's the, the, the field is changing just like everything in, in, in the world. The technology is advancing rapidly. Now, are, are people still doing, I, I believe my, I have a twin brother. I think he had the, the laser surgery. Is so LASIK surgery that, still going on. It is, okay. All right. So, it's, so LASIK, there's different types of LASIK surgery now. So it's advanced over what it originally was. Uh, so LASIK surgery works very well. You have, to, you have to make sure you're a good candidate before you have it done. So you need the same thing. Make sure just where the guy's just not doing it or lady's not doing it just because they can make money, but you're actually a good candidate to have it done because you can you can if you're too nearsighted or your cornea is too thin, then you should not have LASIK. Interesting. So so and then that you know because that that's a permanent thing. That's uh, you can't go back and fix that once it's been laser but right or you can right. you can fix it, but the fix is not <laughs> it may not be as the outcome you want, but you can repair that or have a corneal transplant, but you don't want to go that route. Got it. Got it. So you've been down in Southwest Florida for, for a long time and seen a lot of changes. What do you like to do in your off time? Well as I've gotten older that's changed a little <laughs> a little <laughs> bit. And my I've played tennis for like 40 years. So I play a lot of tennis. I do. I, I play some golf, but when I was a little younger and I lived on the water, I did a lot of fishing as well, but I don't do that anymore. There you go. Taking up new hobbies is always something, yep. something new to do. Absolutely. So are there any last things that maybe our listeners should know about, you know, your office that, uh, you know, they don't know or if they want to come check you out? Well, I mean, we still provide personal care. I mean, your, your eye health is the first thing I care about when you come into my office. So we're going to do things the correct way. You're going to listen. To, I will be happy to sit down and talk with you and tell you what I think and see and explain everything that's going on. We're just not a, a mill that runs you through and we hope we make a lot of money. That's it. Uh, coming back to customer service and treating the patients the right way. Right. That's, that, that's good to see because it's not so common nowadays. Um, how would our listeners go about getting a hold of you if they, you know, they want to investigate a little bit more and get some test run? So I have a website called floridacataract.com that you can get a lot of information off of. There's all kinds of information about cataracts, macular degeneration, dry eyes, uh, all, all types of information. So you can go to that website and see all that we have to say and learn a lot as well. Very good. Doctor, it's been a been a pleasure getting to know you, uh, you know, briefly here. And uh, thank you for being a good neighbor. And uh, I hope to see you out in the neighborhood soon. My pleasure. It's great. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast Astero. To nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show, go to gnpastero.com. That's gnpastero.com. Or call 239 296 2621.